Bloggers were gave me a fortune and shutter margin. Hello, and you're all very welcome here this morning to Dublin from wherever you're looking, watching. So we, I begin this morning. I'm Paul Porrigan is my name. I'm the pastor working with St. Michael's in Inchy Core, St. Michael's Church. It's one of the oblate parishes of Dublin. But I'm not beginning in St. Michael's Church. I'm here at what Pope Francis refers to as the domestic church. I'm in my mother's home, the family home that I was born and reared in here in Dublin. And behind me, I'm standing here in front of my mother's dresser and you can see on it all the different little artifacts that we gave her. Some are little presents we gave her when we were growing up. Others are things she collected. Some of it are their plates from my mother, my grandmother's house and, and my, my great grandmother's house. And among them all, you'll see there are two Dublin flags because we're all about du Dublin, supporting Dublin Gaelic football and hurling in this house. Both my grandparents, both my my uh, grandparents, my my mother's mother and my mother's father both played hurling or camogie as the female version is called for Dublin. In fact they met in Island Bridge at the Phoenix Park playing. And today is a great day for Dublin. Today is the feast of St Lawrence O'Toole. Many people just let it slip by and we don't acknowledge it enough in Dublin but he was a wonderful man and I'll look a little bit at his life in a minute but he's the patron of St. Lawrence O'Toole, he was canonised in 1225 and he's the patron of the Archdiocese of Dublin and Glendalough. So we just pause this morning here in Dublin and around the world to just remember Lawrence, Lorcan O'Toole as he was referred to in Irish. So we just ask for his, invoke his presence and his, his blessing on us today. Let us pray. God of all holiness, who called St. Lawrence O'Toole, Rochon O'Toole, from a life of quiet and solitude, to be a shepherd of your people, a teacher of the clergy and friend of the poor, grant, we pray, that we may follow his example of perseverance and through his intercession arrive at the peace of your kingdom. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And that prayer says, you know, to help us have the perseverance that Lawrence had. And what does it mean? Well, we know that he was born in 1128 and he died quite young at the age of 52 in 1170. And he persevered. That is one word throughout his life. The first thing was he was the son, the eldest son of the King of Leinster, one of the chieftains of Leinster, the Gaelic chieftains. And he was fostered out to another famous Gaelic chieftain called Dermot McMurrah, who became High King of Leinster. And he was fostered at 10 years of age and his biographies tell us that it was not a good experience. That he spent, instead of it being a proper fostering care experience, which was friendly uh, unity between, between chieftains, for him it became, it was one of imprisonment. And for two years he had a very, very tough time, the age of 10 to 12. And then at 12 he was transferred to the monastery at Glendalough to learn uh, for his education. Now he loved Glendalough and there he learned the monastic way and anybody who's been to Glendalough and at the moment we're not allowed to travel with COVID-19 but it's something we must all do and if you can't come physically to go on the global uh, Google, go into the beautiful magnificent Glendalough um, and it's where St Kevin founded his monastery 700 years before Lawrence ended up there. So he, he, as a little boy of 12, he then went to the monastery at Glendalough and was trained in the monastic way. And he wasn't supposed to be remain there. So, but when his father and uh, his foster father wanted to take him out of there, he wouldn't leave. He loved the monastic life and he decided to stay there. He found a peace there, it's clear from the biography, that he had needed after his negative experience at a younger age. So. At the age of 25 then, he had the abbacy of Glendalough thrust upon him. He was reluctant to take it, but it, it was a unanimous decision by the monks that they wanted him to be their abbot. And then, within 10 years, he then became the Archbishop of Dublin. And not many people realise that when we talk about the Archbishop of Dublin, we should also say the Archbishop of Dublin and Glendalough. That's how you refer to the diocese, even to the present day. And it's because of the connection between Lawrence as the Abbot of Glendalough and then he became the Archbishop of Dublin. Now, 
He was based at what is now Christchurch Cathedral, that famous cathedral in Dublin, and he was the man who turned the first sod at that cathedral. And we know that he was particularly uh, um, very, very kind to the poor, and he particularly built care centres for the poor children of Dublin at that time. Now he then went on to become very involved in what you could call a peace process or trying to bring about peace. At that time the Normans were beginning to invade Ireland and they'd been brought in as well by Dermot Craig Murray uh, and they were the High King of Ireland Roderick or Rory O'Connor was very much against that and he found himself, Lawrence found himself in between the Gaelic Irish and the new arrivals the Anglo-Normans. So he was caught in the middle of that and he became a, a papal legate and became a representative of peace, bringing peace between them and he was trusted by all sides. And he was on a mission actually to talk to Henry II when he, and he'd gone into Britain and on to Normandy to meet Henry II when he actually died in France, in Normandy in 1170. And it was a huge loss to that peace, that, to bringing about peace in Ireland at that time. As we know, conflict, uh, a lot of conflict happened after that. So he stands as a peacemaker, he stands as a person who gave great uh, alms to the poor and also as a person who had come through and endured a lot himself as from, from young childhood. So today then, let's pray with him. So we'll ask his blessing this morning on Dublin and on Ireland but also, we'll start now with praying first of all. Let's pray for our Archbishop Dermot Martin, who is the successor of St. Lawrence O'Toole. So we ask that God may enable our Archbishop, our present day Archbishop, to follow St. Lawrence as shepherd of his people, as a reconciler and a man of peace. A hear na Aislinn, Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves that, like St. Lawrence, we may earnest, earnestly seek the face of God in silent prayer and in the Gospels, and so walk in newness of life. A hear na Aislinn, Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. We pray that we may see the face of Christ in the poor, that we may acknowledge their dignity, that we, that we may look into their face, as Pope Francis says, and may they may the abandoned know that they, that we are close to them. Lord, hear us. A hear na Aislinn. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for children, the children of Ireland, the children of the world, the children of Dublin, the children that are suffering in any way, especially those who are suffering from homelessness and from poverty and are trapped in situations that are not life-giving. We pray that we may always seek in our personal lives, in our family lives, and in our communities, to seek that the children among us may flourish. I hear na Aislinn, Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. And we pray for peace. Lawrence was a great peacemaker, and we pray that that tradition that that seeking of peace, that the church as its role as peacemaker as well, may continue and come to the fore again in a new way. We pray for the peace process on the island of Ireland. We pray for the relationship between Britain and Ireland. Lawrence, the Anglo-Normans were coming into Ireland, the Gaelic Irish were here. Story hasn't changed a huge amount. So we pray for the relationship between Britain and Ireland. We pray that there may be a new wisdom between the two islands through this Brexit period. Lord, hear us. A hear na Aislinn, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray too then, of course, for, Saint, for Pope Francis, our Pope, who has invited us this coming Sunday to stretch out our hands to the poor in the World Day of the Poor. And we, we pray and give thanks for his wisdom and for that for the openness of his heart to the poor and to the whole of creation. And we pray that we may have similar hearts. Lord, hear us. A hear na Aislinn. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, 
You have blessed this diocese of Dublin and Glendalough with the example and prayers of Lurkin O'Toole, St. Lawrence O'Toole. Through his intercession, restore our faith and vision. Renew, renew our energies and love that with, and love, renew our energies and love that with your abundant grace we may serve you faithfully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Banach na fela, lorcan, neafa oriver fads. The blessings of the feast of St. Lawrence O'Toole on you all. Agus gomeri mi bio er namsha orisht. Amen.